up everybody it is fox from the michiko channel and as always i would like to bring something a little different to the table and i know this has been done several times on youtube and other channels but it hasn't been done on this one and i think that everyone kind of in the gun community and prepper community whatever you want to call yourself whether you're just visiting this channel could really benefit from this if you don't already do that and of course today we're going to be talking about a get home bag a travel pack a safety bag whatever you want to call this uh, but anyways we're going to jump right into it so there's a few items on this list that I think are essential, um, something that you should always have on you. And um, even for those of you that may or may not agree with gun, gun laws and all that, if we put the guns aside, there's still a few things that I think you should carry on you every day for a perfect survival tool. If you were stranded, um, whatever the case may be, what really spiked me to do these videos, the recent turn of events that we've had really just in weather related events over the last few years. Obviously we're located in the mountains in the south, so we have tornadoes all the time. Most recently, just a few days ago, we had some really, really rough uh, weather conditions, tornadoes just miles from where I'm, I, I live that really opened my eyes to how important it is to carry or have on you some form of survival gear, overnight packs, first aid kits. And um, even in California with all the random snowstorms in the Midwest with tornadoes, really it's just always a good idea for you, your loved ones, or somebody to have a survival pack. So let's jump into the things that are essential that you probably already carry on you every day that is very essential to survival and that is this right here it has maps this has notes this has a flashlight it's able to dial 911 and literally has every contact that you talk to that could save your life so here's your first step right here this and of course chargers and a battery pack to keep this thing alive now second is water this is Probably the main thing that I keep on me anytime I leave the house, I always carry a jug. It goes everywhere with me whenever I travel, whenever I'm going to and from. I'll always keep at least a half gallon of water or a couple of bottles of water in our vehicles. And um, obviously we'll get onto some more water filtration devices. But So now let's jump into my actual pack. And uh, first thing about this pack, this is my no face bag, AKA a North face bag that I carried in high school. This bag is pretty dang old, but the reason I chose this is because I see a lot of guys um, that carry around their tactical, uh, their FUD bags, their um, you know patches all over them, um, their gravy seals kind of stuff. And that's honestly the last thing I want to look like. I don't want to be stranded in a situation where I'm walking through the city life or even the woods with other people, whatever it may be, I don't want to draw any more attention to myself. And also when this is setting in my vehicle, it doesn't draw attention that it's loaded down with survival gear. It honestly kind of looks like a high school or college kids uh, backpack. Well, I'm going to jump into probably the first thing that I keep on my side pocket here. And this all has to do with uh, life experiences and things that have happened personally in survival packs over the years. And that is a tourniquet. This right here is probably going to need to be something you're not going to have to dig very long for. Um, obviously, you probably have a belt on, but a tourniquet that is easy access to me um, should always be something that is really easy to grab. Tell you a quick story. I was headed to the mountains for a little adventure and myself and my spouse were going down the road and there was a motorcycle down in the ditch and it looked like the guy just laid his motorcycle down. However, um, on further inspection, he had actually hit a mile marker sign and it almost ripped uh, his arm off. Therefore, this dude came in handy really quick. So enough of the story time. On my other side pocket here, I have another water bottle because this may get left behind and honestly, it's pretty heavy and bulky. But this is my actual water pack that I have, and it does have tape around it. Never know when you're going to need some tape and rubber bands. And I'll also use this to store things in. So we'll jump into just some paracord. And once I can get everything out here, I do have a heat blanket. I think I actually have a couple of these. Of course, I have a cheap little poncho. This is more or less a backup poncho. If I needed to wrap my gear up or um, lay something down on the ground, I have an extra poncho in there. And fingernail clippers, toenail clippers. These are always handy to have. And I have the batteries here. These are the batteries for the flashlights and the headlamp that I run in my survival pack with a little bit of electrical tape around them. 
And of course, a lighter. A whistle. This is something that I've learned um, in many tornado events and survival situations. You can never go wrong with having a whistle and a little bit of powder. I'm telling you right now, if you do a lot of traveling by foot or you walk or you bike or you do anything, this right here is a game changer for not only your feet, but um, under your arms, any place where you could really be sweating and uh, develop a lot of friction. And I do keep a pair of shoestrings in here because part of if you are stranded and having to do a really long trek, you never know. And those are just a few things that I keep in the water bottle. Uh, all right, so cracking into the backpack, we'll start with this top layer here. And I always keep an extra pair of pants. You never know, um, man, you may be caught up in a rainstorm, whatever it may be, I always like having an extra pair of pants. And part of survival to me is getting up off the ground if it was something where you had to exit out of your vehicle. I do have a little shelter here. This is just a single person hammock with straps. These straps actually come in handy because they have, um, I think a 200 pound rating per strap. So honestly, those could be great for climbing or repelling any of that nature. So you've got a little bit of shelter and keep in mind, I don't want to go with some badass looking tactical setup. I kind of want to blend in as much as possible. So I don't have a camouflage hammock. It's blue. I honestly just look like kind of the average civilian. And um, I do keep a little hatchet here. This could be used as a hammer or to cut trees, whether it was for firewood. This is also extremely handy to have. We'll keep going on here. And part of doing one of these get home packs isn't just only for, let's say, a survival situation. I keep one of these in each one of my family members' vehicles. You can get into these pretty cheap um, but kind of going back to just having one of these this could just be for your family vacation this could just be to have something for extra medicine the other day we were going on a little trip and i ate some gas station pizza and i had terrible heartburn so kind of into this you've just got simple first aid stuff triple antibiotic ointment gauze you've got some tape you have medical gloves cough drops band-aids i do keep deodorant and aspirin ibuprofen, Tylenol. Um, this is really full of all that. Most importantly, chapstick, as well as um, sunscreen. I'm sorry, I said that this was deodorant, but that's actually sunscreen. You get stranded and you're having to hike around 10, 15 miles and it's a sunny day, man, you're in for it. Another thing I kind of like to do is label um, a lot of the pills and medicine that we can keep in our little survival packs here. Um, put the date, what milligram they are, what kind of medication they are, and all of that good stuff. So we'll dig into a little deeper. So here I've got another little pack with uh, some hot hands. These are actually the larger ones. So you could put these down in your boot or keep your feet warm. And I'll always keep some cash. That's ultimately gonna be up to you how much cash you wanna keep. Cash is a great bartering tool. And I've also thought of course of another heat blanket. Uh, try to keep two of these, one that you could lay underneath you, one you could wrap up in for kind of your shelter. And um, I think it's important if you're gonna be out for a long stint of time to keep your hygiene up. You know, if you're out for four or five days and you're in nasty weather, rainstorms, jungle, whatever it may be, man, being able to stay clean and rinse off is also a really good survival tool to be clean. I do keep a, a toothbrush, mini toothbrush and toothpaste here. It's another one of those things. If I'm gonna be out, I want to try to keep my hygiene up. And I do wear contacts and glasses, so I keep an extra pair of contacts and I do keep a spare set of glasses in here as well. A little liquid skin, this could be great for bug bites if you're traveling through the woods or if you get nicked up by briars, brush, and all of that stuff. This stuff right here can fight off some pretty good infections if you can keep it clean and get it covered up. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the back here and I keep wet wipes. This is another good thing to have keep yourself clean, wipe your face up, and they're just easy to stow away. Now, I've seen all kinds of methods for food packs and survival food, depending on how long you're gonna be out. This bag is kind of tailored, set up to my situation. Anytime I'm usually traveling, I keep two meals. I'll keep a breakfast and a lunch. Even for work daily, I carry a little lunch pail that has um, a couple of snacks in it and things like that. So normally, I've always got a little bit of food, 
But this right here just kind of uh, seals the deal for, so I just keep the tuna packs. I rotate these out. These have a really long shelf life, a little flavor in there. So that's something that's easy to store, packs up real nice. And I keep a couple of beef jerky sticks in here, easy to stow away, long shelf life, and a couple of hydration packs. But another cool thing is to keep caffeine. I don't know how long you could be out, whether it's two or three days, a little bit of caffeine to kind of give you that extra ump, those few extra miles to hike. You know, this right here is uh, something that I'm not gonna leave the house without. <laughs> I don't particularly drink the energy juice. I'm more of a coffee drinker. So let's move down a little further in here and we'll get to the good old trash bag. I feel a lot of military guys and a lot of people that have hiked through um, nasty terrain swear by a trash bag that it'll keep your stuff dry if your pack gets wet. So in here I keep a handkerchief, um, little cloth bandana, whether it's something to cover my face, put around my back, um, fight the sun off, hide my face, whatever it may be, little handkerchief. And I do keep a change of underwear with a change of socks. Another thing I have here is just a little pullover. So that's the few items that I keep in my trash bag there. That's where my pants need to be as well. So we'll move in a little deeper down here. And of course, a ball cap, keep the sun out of my face, not get sunburnt. That right there is a perfect thing to keep on you. Next item in this pack is going to be a stowaway jacket. This is one of those foldable um, kind of micro jackets. They're very warm, they're lightweight. They allow me to be able to walk, move around, and it's not a lot of weight. There's another perfect survival tool there, um, some chickens. If you can ever keep chickens with you, that's perfect too. Thought somebody was sneaking up behind me. Anyways, these, these jackets are so easy to stow away. They get very small, but most importantly, we're in that springtime, going back to the tornado weather. It was like 80 degrees last week. Now it's in the 50s, and uh, this weekend it's gonna be 80s, but with a low in the night of mid 40s to low 40s. So a nice stowaway jacket is ideal. So here's something you probably may not see in a lot of survival packs, and that is a little bottle of whiskey. Now, it's not the best whiskey. If it was, it probably wouldn't be in this pack, but this is something that could be an excellent barter tool. This is something that, hey, man, it could be your last drink. I don't know. But now we're gonna kind of jump into the second part of this pack, and Something really important is a raincoat. This is something that's easy to fold up and it fits in the front pocket of that pack quite easy. It's not exactly crazy about this color. It is kind of a tactical color, but um, it still blends in pretty well. And it's big enough to where I could put my pack underneath it and uh, wear this over everything. So raincoat. N next item is going to be a good knife. These knives are extremely tough and they're super lightweight and they seem to be pretty hard to break. This is a knife that with that hatchet there, if you needed to really get through some stuff, you could probably hit this knife multiple times and it really not do a whole lot of damage to it. So a good knife is a must. Next item is going to be a small flashlight. Now this flashlight, I actually keep the batteries in, but I put them in upside down with a piece of tape over them. And I wrote myself a little note there it says battery is backwards and then I put a date on it. That way I can constantly check it. It's on the front pocket so I can check this, make sure the batteries haven't exploded. And this is a pretty bright little light. And then I have my little pack here with extra batteries. So flashlight. Now, something that you may or may not agree with, but it's something that you should probably keep on you at all times, especially if you're able and legal to, would be your conceal and carry. So I always have my Glock 43 XMOS. I always have that on me. So in all of my packs, I keep a couple of extra mags. I have uh, two 10 round mags. And of course in this one, I have 15 plus one. So plenty of nine mil bullets in there for backup. And Kind of going to jump back to, to me, the most important survival things, that cell phone, your gun, and your water. Those are kind of three things that I always want to have around me. Well, let's keep cracking into uh, this little 
mini packs here. Electric tape, something that you may always find yourself in need of and a lighter with quite a bit of the Gorilla duct tape wrapped around it. So you have an uh, easy way to store some extra tape there. And it's pretty crazy how just this small little bag here can house all of this uh, good stuff. We'll open up the back zipper here and crack into it. And I keep a set of gloves in here. I can't tell you how important it is to protect your hands. You get out there and there is a tornado and the roads are blocked and you have limbs all over them and you don't wanna leave your vehicle. Obviously, this right here is probably gonna be your best bet to be able to get home. But if there's a lot of limbs in the road and you um, are able to move them out with your truck or even your car, um, kind of going back to those hammock straps, you'd be really surprised with putting one of those to your tow hooks and wrapping around one of the limbs and moving out of the way. Just kind of thinking to use the tools you have, but uh, you're gonna wanna protect your hands in either of those situations there. And of course, a headlamp. This is obviously a must. This is gonna allow you to trek through um, uncharted territory or the woods and be able to still have both your hands or be on the phone, whatever it may be, you'll have your light there with your headlamp. Let's get into the front pouch here. And water filtration. Going back to water once again, this is probably the most important thing you can have if you're going long distances or trying to survive in the wild. This is gonna allow you to go up to basically any puddle or any decent stream or pond of that matter and um, be able to suck this out and fill up your pack here or your bottle and take water on the go, but also be able to not have to carry, you know, two gallons of water and exhaust yourself. So super important to have. You can get these at Walmart, Amazon, these little filtration dudes um, for around 20 bucks. Next best thing is going to be a battery pack that is solar equipped. So you can charge this just being outside. It doesn't even have to be a full sunny day. And you have, of course, all your plugins to charge your phones. Uh, your flashlights, whatever it may be. And what's really cool about this one here is it does have a flashlight on it. So that's a pretty uh, cool feature. And then it does blink. So if you were lost on the side of the road, you could set this dude up and really uh, cast out a little bit of light. Super important to have, and obviously you're gonna want the phone chargers and everything you have to fit that. Here's another thing that I keep at the very bottom of the bag, and that is an umbrella. You can laugh all you want, but I've been in several situations, whether it was for a meeting or whether it was for just traveling out and about, and it started coming a rain pour, and I didn't really feel like getting drenched. I do keep an umbrella at the very bottom of this backpack, so that can definitely come in handy as well. Another good idea to keep on you is a good pair of safety glasses, sunglasses doesn't have to be any particular brand, just something to protect your eyes. If you're trekking through some rough terrain, branches, whether it be at night, whatever it may be, a set of safety glasses, or at the worst case, um, a set of sunglasses are definitely gonna protect your eyes. So let's get into footwear. Obviously, if you're a business person, if you live in a large city, or if you travel to and from work and you wear a suit, and the worst case happens, you're probably gonna want something different than your dress shoes or your Crocs. You wanna have something that's gonna be able to allow you to move quickly, move efficient, and protect your ankle, but also be able to allow you to maybe run if you have to. I choose the Solomon um, Out Pulse. These aren't my newest boots, but they're a pair that I keep in my truck for kind of a backup if I'm wearing dress shoes and traveling. At least I have a good pair of shoes. And this isn't like it's a new pair that I'm having to break in. This is a pair that I have ran in multiple times, so I know they're gonna be up for the task and my foot's really comfortable in them. Another good thing to keep would maybe be a fanny pack. This wouldn't be the exact one for choice that I would want to hang out. I would probably wear this on the front and then be able to tuck my jacket over it. But this would kind of give you quick access, whether it be your phone, um, an extra magazine, your pocket knife, maybe your glasses, um, your flashlight. This is gonna kind of give you that extra um, one up to be able to get to your things a little quickly. You can always tie things to it. Kind of a good idea to keep um, in your survival pack or in your pack for um, mobile purposes. If you're out and about, you have some quick access tools you can get to. Now, a few honorable mentions on here that I do not have laid out would be a multi-tool. 
I think a multi-tool is an excellent thing to keep in your survival pack. I don't have Another really good survival tool would be a map. I know the area that I live in pretty well. However, if I travel three, four, five, six hours, or even a few states over, I may not know the main roads or the back roads. And you may have to up and leave that situation. Whether you're Another honorable mention would be to be in good physical shape for those that are able. I if you can be in good physical shape where you can put this pack on and trek down two, three, Three, four miles and just kind of get used to this and see what changes you may need to make. Nothing bad is going to happen with being in good shape and being prepared for terrible events or catastrophic events to happen. So this pack is actually tailored towards um, my area and my daily travels and where I live. We live in the mountains, so we do have landslides, we have road give, give way, um, we have all kinds of things like that that happen that you don't really think of until so it keep does. In mind, Build this up, what works best for you. You can take some of my ideas and things that I have here and uh, put them towards use in your survival pack and what works for you in your area. This is another little tool here that you can get on Amazon or anywhere on the interweb. And this is going to be a little four-way key for gas and water. If you're stranded out and um, the worst happens and you're needing to get water, fill your water bottle up and you can't find any place, a lot of uh, big name box stores, super centers and those kind of things, they have water spigots that are on the outside of the building that have locks on them. This will allow you to turn those on and fill up your water jugs. And I think these are like six bucks. So that's another really good thing to keep on you. All right, everybody, I believe this about wraps it up here. I hope. Everybody enjoyed today's video. I know it is something a little different, but it's something with the most recent events we've had here in our home state uh, with all the tornadoes and the storms. I just felt this was something good to do. And of course, um, tailor this to what's gonna work best for you and your family. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And please do like, share, subscribe. This is Fox, and I will catch you very soon next time.